No windy day. Windy, windy, windy. We'll see how this mic does. Um, let's put that, oops, that thing on. What do you say? Resaw. It's been raining and blowing right in my shed here all morning. There you go. Hear the wind whistling between my uh, tripod. Um, should be simple, right? Should be simple. I got the, I got the box and the instructions, and uh, we should lift that right up on there, right? I don't know. Y'all know what instructions are, right? Instructions, instructions, instructions. They're right there. Oops, they're right there. You know what they are, right? Just another man's opinion. So let's see what they say. Nah, let's just hook it up. Damn, you weren't recording that. Well, that's a heavy pallet. It's probably a good thing you weren't recording it. I said a couple of curse words I'm trying to pick that up. But it just barely balances on the forks. I should be able to get it right up on there. It's raining out here. But I don't have a sawmill shed. I can get in. That'd be nice. I can get in a freaking shed. Let's try not to drop this. What do you say? Whoa. Wish I could see. That would be nice. Oh, almost there. There we go. Sweet, don't it? <laughs> Looks small sitting up there, don't it? Oh, uh, let's put this tractor in the shed so I don't get rain on this crack seat. GoPro, stop recording. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can get this up on there now. Oh, this is gonna be a problem. I wonder if that's supposed to go. I how to read the instructions. wonder if that's supposed to go down or above that. You'd think it'd go above it, don't you? Having to hold it down now, that's a pain. Yep. Oh, it just misses it. If it's there, now it won't slide. Something on the other end won't slide. Oh, it's gone on it. Oh, there we go. All right. All right. Looks good now, huh? Nope, I probably ought to put those dogs down. So this bolt is just catching on this. I'm sure once I get it screwed in, it won't. And I think those dogs got to go down first before he screws over too far. Let's see what we got. There's your supplies. Yeah, I think these dogs got to go down. This one might go down here. Nope, oh, that won't go down. There we go. Now they will. Can you hear that wind? I'm hoping this mic's blocking out most of that wind. Oh shoot, I don't even have the key out. Alright. I better turn the battery off. We're gonna unhook that anyway. I think that's the first step. Oh, first step we get the head down there, huh? Let's try that. So we've got to take one of these wires, hook it into this one, we we'll have to cut that. Hook it into this wire. And then this wire hooks into our forward power feed. So the first time setting it up looks like it's gonna be a pain because I've got to hook, I've got to change wires in this box or on that power feed. I've got to put new wires on it. And then after that, it's just a plug, plug and unplug. Unplug it from the mill and then plug it into this and then unplug it. 
And then of course you got to do the bolts and you got to, there's a rail lock, two rail locks you got to put on. But other than that, looks pretty simple. I don't even know what I'm going to resaw, but we're going to resaw something. Here's your little knobs for the shingle, making it angle, or the siding, not the shingle, the siding adapter, making it uh, cut crooked. We'll see. So I got to start it up now and bring it down here. All right. Okay, there it is. This uh, debarker is just uh, barely missing this when you go down. Take that sawmill head down to about eight, and then at eight you're sawing this. You're sawing the, the uh, rubber mat on here. All right, so now we tighten this down. Bust into the battery box. Get that this wire over there to the battery box and uh, plug it in. See what's going on. Looks so small, doesn't it? We have to get some. I got some rollers over there. We have to get some. Bring a roller in here so I can put it over there and then roll it back. But it'll probably just be. It's exactly the same as this one. The shorter one here. It's exactly the same as this one. Same size. But it's just a lot longer. But man, that seems like a lot of cord sticking out there, doesn't it? Well, maybe I should use that one. Have all that cord sticking out. So I can hang it up on something. I don't know. We'll see. We'll get this, this one on the power feed first. Because I know this one goes on the power feed. Or maybe we put this one on the power feed. Or maybe we put this one on the power feed. These hook together. There's your reading instructions. I think this one goes on the power feed. This one goes in the box. This one's scrap. Yep, that's what I think. That's what I think. That's what we'll do. Maybe. Unless I change my mind again. Read the directions, maybe. Yeah. But now, can I get that wires off the power feed? They're way down in there. Let me see. Let's see if I can get those wires off this power feed without taking this power feed off. Without taking this motor off. Probably have to crawl under the mill. I may not get it then. But we'll see if I can get that nut right there off. Give it a try. Well, I can't get my hand down in there to even get the cap off this. So, I guess, oh, there the cap came off. I guess I probably ought to follow the instructions and remove this power feed motor. Because I don't think I'll ever get that next one off. That's way down in there. Now we're just going to try to remove this power feed motor. <coughs> Sounds like a simpler idea. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to do this either. I don't know how easy or hard this is going to be. All I've ever done here is tighten up that belt. Power feed belt. Oh, i got to remove all three of those bolts, and that one's a pain in the butt to get to. This power feed belt. Tight enough, but nobody says how tight it's supposed to be. You know, there's no like belt tensioner thing to <coughs> well I don't know how that one's gonna come out I gotta take out this wheel because that bolt's not gonna come out of there crap I'm gonna take out that wheel dang it I'm gonna have to take that off to get that motor to drop out of there because this isn't gonna come out this isn't gonna back out far enough It's not gonna back out far enough for me to get it up there, is it? Dang it. Should have read the instructions. Should have followed that other guy's opinion. Yeah. Boy. That's tight. I don't think there's any way that that's gonna come off there without taking this wheel off. 
but I can at least get this belt off. See that screw? Way too long. Look at that. There's no way it's coming off without taking off that wheel. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. I don't want to do that. But I really can't get my fingers in there to do it the other way. Yeah, there's no way that those nuts are coming out. The nuts coming out of there. I can loosen it by just uh, moving those two. I can loosen it enough to get the belt off. <laughs> Maybe. Yep. But I can't drop the motor out of there. Uh, maybe. I might just scoot that forward. There might just be enough room to get that bolt out of there. Should be close. Be close, close, close. I can't believe Woodmiser would make it that close, would they? Surely not. It's like a damn Japanese car. There's almost enough room to work on it. You ever have to work on it? Almost in the firm. Not quite. And now, of course, the motor can't drop out. I might have to take that off. Damn, how many? It's got two tightening points on that. Yeah, they. Could have made just a little bit less room in here, and then it, there would be no way to get it out. And that would be just perfect. But there's just enough room. Now I'll find an Allen wrench. I'll work in there. Let's take that off. And then I should be able to get that. Oh man, can I even get that motor out of there then? I can't even get the motor out of there then. Nope, it won't come out. Have to pick up the motor and drop it out? I don't know. There's a bar under there stopping it from coming out. Hopefully there's enough room to get that motor out. Find an Allen wrench. So now that I can turn this motor around, still, I don't need to take that off. I might be able to get this off there. I don't know how you replace this power feed. Probably have to look that up someday. But man, there's just not any room down in here to get this off. No room at all. Oh, now you can drop this nut. This one's already going straight to the ground. I might as well just throw this one on the ground. Oh, I made it. Okay. One wire. Problem is, it's blue and the other one's green. I'm colorblind. No, just kidding. All right, the blue one goes on there. How are we going to know that? Huh. All right, let's try this. Blue one goes on there. What, the one with the black line is the blue one. How about that? Turn it over. And, hey, this one's got a black line on. No, just kidding. Turn it over and I can just barely get this wrench in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Drop this nut on the ground. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, we can. Okay, and the green one goes on there. Okay, now we're back over here, right? Right. We're back over here, and pulling this wire. 
which has these big rubber things on it. I think they go through here. So there's no way that rubber thing's going to go through that. And I can't take it off. But I don't need a rubber thing, right? Dang it. I need to put it back on. <coughs> yeah, the wire. Why that's a little bit too tight for me. I think I'm loose. All right. Now we pull this wire through this little bitty hole. And then all this wire here is supposed to remain bunched up in your battery box. That doesn't make any sense. And then this long wire, the long wire is supposed to go through here. One at a time, because they don't both fit. They may not both fit at all. All right, maybe two at a time. Maybe the same time. Not at the same time either. They just don't want to fit. Well, luckily, you don't have to do this every time you hook up your resaw. From now on, it'll just be plug and play, which will be good. All right, now we got a, what, this plastic tube goes on here. Man, that moon's really kicking up now. And it's raining. Thought I have a sawmill shed. All right. Now, which one's hot? Was blue hot or is green hot? You'd think blue would be hot, wouldn't you? Well, it doesn't matter. Blue's hot now. It probably does matter for forward and reverse, doesn't it? But we'll take the red wire and put it on top and then we'll equal out, right? That makes sense? Yeah. So, I probably have to get like some kind of disclaimer that I'm not a freaking mechanic. I'm not an electrician. Don't follow my electrical advice. Because I don't know shit about this stuff. You know, not only did I... disconnect the battery but I just shut off the power to the whole farm too just in case not that the mill's plugged into anything but are you where are you looking at hey you still looking over there what are you doing looking over there I'm over here what do we need a Phillips and the trusty 716s yes Wait a minute. If I just put those two wires through here, doesn't that make them touch them together? So I only need to put one through there? I should probably only put one through there, huh? That won't, that doesn't make sense to me. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. <coughs> like I said, I'm not an electrician. And I don't like doing this stuff at all. But that doesn't make sense. They'd be touching, rounding each other out, right? That's what, I think that's what the book says. Put both of them in there, but we're not going to. This just makes more sense to me. Put one in there so that it's not rounding out the other, right? I think the book says put both of them through there. This doesn't apply. Maybe they don't ground each other out somehow. I don't know. All right, anyway, let's tighten them to where they're straight. 
Let's tighten them like that, where they're straight. Then I can get this wire back on. I can see if there was two rubber hoses. Put one over it, and then the other one. But I think that's the way to go, don't you? That doesn't make sense. Putting both of them in there. It's 50 out. Well, it's probably about 40 now. My hands are getting cold. But it's better than a 30 degree day. This is February. And uh, we're at 50, so I'm not complaining at all. I figured it'd be a good day to do this, but with that rain it's and the wind, it's kind of getting cold now. All right, we're just gonna leave this one out of the wire because it doesn't make sense to me to put it in there. Uh, I'll probably kick up with sawdust and spark and catch the whole damn thing on fire. I don't know. But we're not gonna do it anyway. Okay, now we've got this wire. Then we take the short wire, shorter one here, sawdust all over it. And we have got the red and the black. Well, which would be red would be the blue and black would be the green. All right, so you gotta go back up here if you wanna see anything. You probably really don't wanna see anything, do you? You can't see anything with my big head in there anyway, right? My big head's probably in the way the whole damn time. All right, so this black one here is gonna go on this side because <coughs> it has no mark on it. It's gonna go right over there. And then I'm gonna put on this knot after I drop it on the ground a couple times. Wow, you just can't get your fingers in there. I'm probably gonna get this video back inside and won't be able to see crap because my everything's in the way. Oops, wait a minute. Let's try one of these. You wanna put one of these on there? Let's try. I don't know if it'll go over that. Ooh, one more chance to drop this nut on the ground. That'll probably be a good time to do it. Nope. What the heck? I don't think I can get this over there. You? Look at that. That shouldn't go on there. And it doesn't. There's no way to get that on there, is there? Man, I hate this electrical crap. Anybody just turn it inside out? Is that what you do? I don't know. Owning it. Well, I don't even own it. Having a sawmill sure makes you a freaking mechanic and electrician and everything else. Boy, that don't want to go over there. And I'm not a mechanic. I don't even want to be a mechanic. I'm damn sure not an electrician. But I think we're getting somewhere here. Boy, that thing's not giving it up easy. Even if I, even if I rip this plastic, I'm better off with it on there, right? What a bunch of crap. That's... They probably sent something in that kit that I could be using, right? Let's see if that's... It's really not on there like it's supposed to be yet. All right, I'm going to have to go off camera to do this. Because I can't keep you on camera and yeah I can huh. got it that's not that's not very nice right there look at that I twisted that too that's not very nice at all yeah that's not nice at all should be that should be against the law or something right there I'm going to go off camera, but that's how you do it. It's just easy, right? <laughs> I'm going to get the other one on. Well, unbeknownst to you, it's been two days, but I was sicker than a dog. Uh, so I bolted it down. 
I've tightened all these up all the way around. I've just got to tighten this, the uh, set screws here. Tighten that nut all the way around still. And I've got to put on those locking clamps. I've got one on. It only shows one in the book. And I've got to, this head is supposed to be within a 16th or a 32nd of that blade. I don't think I've ever measured anything to a 32nd in my life. But that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to put that head down, the blade down and measure to a 32nd on that belt. So we'll do that, make sure it's level. If I have to move it, that's why I don't have those locking nuts tight yet. If I have to move it up, you know, a little bit on one side or the other, just to make sure it's perfectly straight. I'll put those locking clamps on. I think I found a couple places. I'll take you under there. Um, the book doesn't really show exactly where to put those locking clamps, but it can't be too hard. Heads, the idea is the head uh, can't move forward or backwards once you get it set. So I'm going to lower this blade and put some tension on the blade, and I'm going to lower the blade and uh, level this out. Not level, but straight to within 30 seconds of each side of that blade. And then I'm going to put these locking clamps on. This locking clamp, let me get under there, I'll show you. Okay, so the book shows the locking clamp goes under here, you know, on the, on the rail. So I think what I'm going to do is we have one right here. I haven't got it tightened down yet or anything. This one right here will stop it from going backwards because it's on that bolt right there. I don't know if you can see that or not. And then this one here, I'm going to put up in front of this on here. And then tighten it. You tighten it right on that, on the lower rail. That'll stop the head from accidentally going forward or backward. So it's hand tight. So I'll tighten this down, and then I'll tighten this down. These are both just loose. But this will be stopped by this bolt, the bolt head here, and this will be stopped by this rail here. And then the saw won't be able to go forward or backwards, I hope. Oh, crap. GoPro start recording? All right, we're already recording, I hope. Okay, still having trouble with getting the GoPro to do the recording for me. I got the, everything bolted down. This is level, eh. but you got to remember when you start that blade, this head pulls down, it's designed to pull down a 16. So I think we're within 30 seconds on this blade. You can't go below, uh, I think it's seven and a half. If you go below seven and a half, you're in trouble. Right at seven and a half there now. There's seven and a half. So that's, I mean, that's pretty thin right there for me. It's gonna be scary. I can do seven and a half. But I'll have to figure out what that'll, you know, what boards those will give me and all that. Um, I've got this hooked up to the feed. I've got the forward power feed unhooked. I've got it locked underneath. It won't go anywhere, forward or back. All the bolts are tight. There's one other thing that they told me in the description here is that you can move this, you can move these, this head here, and because I have the debarker, I'm supposed to move this head all the way to here, forward, so that it misses the debarker, but my debarker misses it anyway, I got it all the way over that way, like it's supposed to be, it says in the book to put it all the way over that way, I'm going to leave that roller right over there for now, but I'm going to do some 12 inch wide boards, and I probably should have this over just a little bit. But, you want to see if it comes on? Start it up, see the rolls? You're going to have to subscribe to my channel and watch the next video. Sorry. But, I've got a. The next video will be actually starting it up and cutting some wood. Uh, I've got some uh, kiln dried wood. It's like uh, 9 8 inch kiln dried wood. And I'm going to take it down to 3 8 inch. Um, Resaw it to 3 8 inch thick, maybe. I'm going to give it a try. We'll see what happens. But other than the siding, uh, lap siding maker, that's all I'm going to be using it for is just to resaw some kiln dried wood that I can't resaw on the, on the mill because it won't go down below the stops. 
so we'll go to you can't we saw three eighths of an inch unless you have you know a two inch three inch piece that's film dried which I don't have so follow along here and we'll uh on whatever channel I'm on and we'll see if this resaw works next time <laughs>